What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Geek Master. As usual, I'm your host, Cassius Samuels, and today we're going to be talking about Aquaman. That's right. As you all know, for quite some time now, one of the most prominent debates amongst comic book fans everywhere has revolved around Aquaman and his value as a character to the DC Universe and more specifically the Justice League itself. You have one side of the tractors that say that Aquaman is worthless, he's lame, he has no real contribution to make to the Justice League and that the DC Universe will be just fine without him. And then you have the other side of supporters who say Aquaman is totally underrated. He's one of the most important members of the Justice League, and he is part of the upper echelon of heroes in the DC Universe as a whole. Well kids, I'm here to settle this debate once and for all today, well at least I'm going to try to. And I'm going to try to do that by telling both sides right off the bat that they're both wrong because Aquaman is neither a completely worthless character, and he's not one of the baddest motherfuckers in the DCU either. But please keep in mind, this is just my opinion, so feel free to disagree. But I hope by the time you walk away from this discussion, you understand why I have come to believe this conclusion is the most logical one. And at the very least, I hope to give you something to think about. But right up front, I will tell you right now, I've never been a real Aquaman fan. I still don't concern myself to be a huge Aquaman fan, despite the marvelously critically acclaimed New 52 one by Jeff Johns either. I've read my fair share of Aquaman titles from the pre-52 and the new 52, and I'm distinctly familiar with him as a character, but in the end, Aquaman's really just not my bread and butter. And I say that because I want you to know, right off Jump Street, that I have no vested interest in playing one side or the other. I would like to think that my indifference towards the character gives me the ability to be very objective about the subject matter because I really don't have any bias for Aquaman as a superhero that forces me to adhere to a predisposed conclusion. I don't hate the character, but I don't love him either. My position falls somewhere in between those two extremes. So just jumping right in, first of all, I don't think Aquaman is an underrated character amongst comic book fans these days at all, just to be clear about that. Maybe the character was misunderstood or underrated in the past, but with the Jeff Johns run revamping the character in the New 52, which led to the current bandwagon of new fans who defend Aquaman like he was their firstborn child, I think it is safe to say that he gets due credit at this point in time. I mean, he's getting a movie for Christ's sake. Shout out to my man Jason Momoa, who I love as Ronan Dex in Stargate Atlantis, and I think he would do the role of Arthur Curry tremendous justice. But let's be real here. Aquaman has a lot going for him as a superhero, considering he is the king of Atlantis, which is a title that gives him dominion over the oceans of Earth. Alongside his ability to telepathically communicate with and control all marine life, this basically means he's master of 75% of the Earth and every life that it contains. Not only that, as the king of Atlantis, Aquaman has command of a massive army and has access to technology that is capable of sinking entire cities into the ocean. He has massive superhuman senses, superhuman reflexes, superhuman endurance, superhuman strength, and superhuman durability due to his body being able to withstand ungodly amounts of pressure from being a deep ocean dweller. He also has impressive hand-to-hand -hand combat skills, a cool-ass trident for a weapon, and a hot-ass red-headed wife with hips for days who can control and manipulate water. So when you start running it off like that, it's easy to say, man, shit, none of that sounds lame to me. I mean, and it doesn't sound lame to me by any stretch of the imagination. But if I'm going to be objectively honest, I have to say that there's not really anything really impressive about that resume either. In order to impress me, you have to first convince me that Aquaman would ever have the balls in a million years to sink a city in mainstream continuity without using time travel as a plot device to undo it, of course before someone in the Justice League intervened to stop him. And secondly, let's be honest, who cares if he can sink a city? I mean, really, it's 2015. Step your game up. Cities get destroyed all the time in comic books because there are tons of heroes and villains alike in the DC Universe with the power set and abilities or technology capable of destroying a city with relative ease if you think about it. We've seen that movie a million times and we know how it ends 99% of the time. If you want to impress me, sink a fucking continent. Fuck a city. When I see a continent wiped off the map, that's when I'll be like, damn, Aquaman got the juice. <laughs> but don't get me wrong, I think any device that can, think that can sink a city is a very formidable weapon of mass destruction to have in your arsenal. 
but I just don't think it qualifies as some kind of extraordinary advantage that can't be overcome in the end. I mean, a nuclear warhead may not sink a city, but it can damn sure make a city uninhabitable, which gets the same effect. You dig? But what about the army, you might ask? Yes, Aquaman has an army, but to me, I think it's an army that can be dealt with very easily, especially if I use two words, the Phantom Zone. I'm not trying to minimize his army in any way, because his army is definitely a force to be reckoned with in all regards. But even if it was just Arthur versus the surface dwellers one on one with no superhero interference, it would be an uphill battle for Aquaman to conquer a world that has several massive armies of its own while trying to eliminate 7 billion people at the same time, especially when you consider that one of those people is Lex Luthor. On top of that, ask yourself, is there really anything in the ocean that is native to the planet Earth that a nuclear bomb won't kill? If your answer is no, then that means that there are over 9 countries on Earth right now with the capability to detonate submersible nuclear weapons against the forces of Atlantis with ease in retaliation of any attack or invasion. And that's without the help of a single superhero on deck. Aquaman's ability to control marine life also really isn't that impressive to me as a superhero power if you think about all the myriad of powers that we've seen demonstrated in comic book history. I'll be the first to admit it sounds like a pretty cool power. I mean we are talking about the ability to control everything from a barnacle to a sea monster leviathan or super squid kraken to be fair. But to me, when you take a minute to think about the situation it becomes painfully obvious how severely limited that ability really is in the big scheme of things as far as the DC Universe superhero elite goes. So in other words, in order for Aquaman's best powers to be effective, he needs to be in an aquatic environment. So he needs to either be in the ocean or somewhere near an ocean or water source in order for him to maximize his true potential as a superhero. And that's a problem for me as a comic book fan because it makes him one dimensional as a character and because that makes it so there's only a specific set of circumstances in which his powers produce any real value. That one dimensional aspect of Aquaman makes him really obsolete to me as a character because it makes him not be able to really contribute to stories that aren't centered around him. Just look at the current Justice League arc with the Dark Side War where Aquaman is nowhere to be found because there's basically nothing for him to do. And this is a major arc that will have major continuity changing ramifications. On top of that, if you think back, Aquaman really hasn't had much to contribute to the Justice League comics at all since the throne of Atlantis. This doesn't make him a useless character by any means, but it does reduce his stature amongst the top tier heroes in the Justice League. If he was a true badass to me, his ass would be making more of a contribution to the D DC Universe as a whole. I'm just saying. But that's the kind of stuff you have to take into account when you're having this discussion. What is he supposed to do when there's a conflict in space or something? Where there's no ocean or marine life to control? What the fuck can he do other than just be a commonly average superhero with nothing more to contribute to a situation other than super strict and super dense skin? Even the Flash has superhero feats that he's accomplished in space, such as outracing a black hole. Yeah, that happened. But one thing that Aquaman fanboys say a lot that bothers me, that is damn sure not just my opinion, is that Aquaman is not as strong as Superman. Please cut that shit out. Stop saying that. And I call them fanboys because they can only be fanboys if they really think that Aquaman lifting a building or flipping a truck with his trident or whatever other strength feat they saw him do means that he's anywhere near the strength of Superman. To put it in perspective how strong Superman is, Superman bench pressed an entire planet for five days straight with no sunlight and barely broke a sweat. Yes, Aquaman has the strength to hurt Superman if he punches him, but Aquaman is no match for Superman's limitless strength. Even if he's fully submerged in the darkest depths of the ocean, there's nothing Aquaman can do that kal cannot do with half the effort. So let's be real here. Aquaman is strong, but on his best day, he's not anywhere near as strong as Superman. So stop spreading lies. So, in order for me to classify Aquaman as a badass motherfucker, he would have to step his game up in some way and have a larger impact on the DCU as a whole and not just the oceans of Earth. 
I can't honestly endorse him as one of the baddest SOBs in the Justice League if the extent of his influence is confined and specialized to scenarios and stories like the Throne of Atlantis that have to be exclusively designed and constructed to specifically accommodate him. If I had the chance to remake Aquaman though and try to make him a more badass character, I'd give him the innate ability to conjure and control water like Mira. This is one of the things I loved about the pre-52 Aquaman because as long as he had the trident of Neptune, he could do stuff like summon tidal waves and whirlpools. He could control the weather, conjure storms and shit, and unleash blasts of lightning. The new 52 trident is just for looks, and it doesn't do shit but give whoever holds it the title of Atlantis' king. That's it. But regardless, he could never innately control weather or control water or any of that stuff innately by himself. And if he could, that would have made him a lot more credible to me as a superhero. I mean, he is called Aquaman, right? I would also make him super dope by giving him the ability to wield Atlantean magic, like Aqualad, which would give him the ability to really go toe-to-toe -to -toe with heroes like Superman and Wonder Woman and Green Lantern. And that would do a lot for his street credibility, in my eyes. But keeping it real for me as it stands right now, he just isn't like this super dope character to me from an objectively honest perspective. He's no pushover by any means, and he's far from a lame, useless character, not like the haters try to make him out to be anyway. But he's really not this super unstoppable, badass motherfucker of a character that fanboys rave about either. Not even his rogues gallery does him any favors considering his only villains that he has worth mentioning are Ocean Master, Black Manta, and maybe King Shark. But yeah, in the end, that's how I feel. I'm not being a hater at all because I fully acknowledge that Aquaman is definitely a character worthy of respect and recognition. He's no pussy, and Homeboy has mad credibility to me as a superhero. But I'm also not a dick rider. So I refuse to put this dude in the category of legendary badass Justice Leaguer. He hasn't earned the title in my eyes, so he doesn't deserve it. I'm sure there are those of you out there who will emphatically disagree with me, and that's cool. I'm willing to hear whatever you have to say as a rebuttal. Just keep it civil and everything's cool my way. But with that being said, I'd like to go ahead and bring this video to a close. If you found any value in this podcast, please like, subscribe, Share the video, uh, follow me on Facebook at The Geek Master, I try to put out at least one video a week, so if you want to stay up to date with all things comic, go ahead and subscribe to the channel, I don't know what else to tell you, but I'm going to go ahead and get out of here, holla back, peace.